the first luxury label bag I fell in love with. This Salvador Ferragamo piece stole my heart with its quite heavy finish but amazingly good touch, its charming looks and 50% discount I got on the original price. What else you can ask from a luxury label? I must admit, I delayed this project for so long just because something in me didn't want to cut this baby up. I bought this Ferragamo Studio box back in late July and I admired it here and there when I was passing by and just a few times while my wife was using it. I admit this dissection is gonna hurt, but the duty calls and we're gonna see what's under the hood. First, I wanna confess the weirdest way I got to know the Salvador Ferragamo brand for the first time a few years back as a luxury ignorant person. I was visiting the leather jacket heaven of the world, my hometown Istanbul, looking for a nice piece for myself. We went into a store of an old friend and I loved the look and feel of this lambskin jacket. It was a friend deal at $200 and I jumped on it. I saw an Italian flag looking tag and a signature type logo inside the jacket, but I ignored them as I was very excited about my new find. I used the jacket happily for about four years and one day I was walking in an airport and saw the same logo. I realized that was a luxury label. And that was the first time I figured I must have gotten a fake jacket from an old friend of my dad. Well, I still have and wear the jacket here and there with a bit of a guilt after learning that it's a counterfeit. So when I say I'm new to this luxury world, believe me, until that event, I have never heard of a name like Salvador Ferragamo. I was that ignorant. But now, with you guys' requests, I am dying to discover the world of luxury labels. So much so that I'm a new reader of Vogue magazine to stay in the know. I would never imagine this change in my interest in a million years. Upon my research, I am also very impressed by the history of this Italian master shoe designer, Salvador Ferragamo. He was known for making custom shoes for Marilyn Monroe and being the inventor of a few big hit heel designs at his time. Ferragamo was born in Italy and lived in the USA for 13 years, where he got to meet with Hollywood and start to make made-to-size shoes for the movies. Upon moving back to Italy, he built his brand upon those prominent women's connections and his innovative passion for making luxury shoes. Impressively, the brand is still owned by the Ferragamo family and only three members of the original family is allowed to work in the company to prevent fierce competition. Smart. With that quick background, we fast forward to this summer when I visited this magical Spanish village called Ubrique. On my way back at Madrid airport, I have entered the Ferragamo store. This bag immediately caught my eye and it was on sale, 50%. Unbelievable. I have never seen a luxury label on sale before. So I asked why. The sales associate said they discontinued this color and showed me the full price new season colors. I was ecstatic as it was one of the most requested brands on my list. So I had to buy it for a great deal of 795 euros duty free. By the way, don't get discouraged for the unimpressive amount I paid for this bag. A slightly larger size of the same design is available in alligator leather at a whopping $30,000 price tag if you want to go extravagant. So the house is serious in their luxury game, yet still has discounts on their bags, an uncommon practice in luxury space. Let me tell you, this bag is by far the best touch and feel heavily finished leather bag I have ever laid my hands on. If you watched my previous videos reviewing Prada Sofiano, Louis Vuitton's Epi and Chanel's Caviar leathers, you know I almost hate those heavily finished leathers. And here's why. As I spent two decades in tannery business and I know how forgiving these finishes are, that tanneries can virtually use any lower grade leathers to accomplish this look. And that tannery in me immediately sees them as inferior by discounting the genuinely high quality hides these brands use to make them. Anyway, this assuming the heavy coat of finish has so lovely of a touch that it makes me like this one. I think it speaks to the master behind the finish of this leather, so kudos on that. But we will see further details as we hurtfully cut up this beauty and what's under that coat. 
At first glance, besides the notes on the leather, the design looks flawless. It's minimalistic, but elegant and very fashionable. I love it. And the craftsmanship is impeccable. The stitching lines, the edge paints, everything looks perfect. The entire bag has a leather lining and I love that. Also, the hardware looks extremely, extremely high quality, but we're gonna see all those things in detail once we start cutting this baby up. So forgive the mess on the workshop today. We're doing this dissection between our holiday order prep rush. So leathertainment continues. As we open up this bag, I see the same exact inner support material, the same brand I found most of my Louis Vuitton dissections. So definitely they use top of the line inner support structures, materials. We also find an authentication chip inside the bag. This is one of the recent things in the luxury space helping with the authentication process. I see all the inner details also cleaned up nicely. I don't see sloppy and dirty things left over inside. So this gives me a sign that the workshop who did this had a quality mindset and had enough time to work on it properly. And also I find the same exact quality leather inside and outside of the bag including the brand tags was used with double side of this high quality lambskin lining they used. This is a great sign that brand didn't try to cut corners on any aspect of the cost. We apply acetone to remove the finish on top of the main leather of this bag. It looks like it's a heavy finish, very protective layer. And it seems like it too, because it didn't absorb the acetone right away. It means the pores are closed. It's gonna be easy to maintain and clean type of leather, very suitable fashion. But I'm surprised how little amount of pigments came off, which says it's accomplished by a very thin layer of finish on top of this. It's a truly masterful finish applied very artisan way to accomplish this fashion look protection and easy cleanability while still allowing us touch and feel that good leather vibe. And I think that's why I might be feeling it when I touch this leather in the first place. So this is definitely one of the best applications of a thicker finish, heavier finish for a fashion leather I've ever seen so far. And the leather choice in the inside is exceptional. It's a beautiful lambskin. Again, very, very minimal pigment finish. I can still see the pores. This is the type of leathers, lambskins that Bottega uses in their products inside or outside. So they definitely didn't cut any corners. They used the best selection of hides inside and outside of this bag. I am very, very impressed. Hardware seems to have a nice coat on top. It's pretty durable in terms of coating. And the metal alloy is a soft, alloy it turns out it's not steel usually the best hardware is stainless steel in the high-end fashion i have seen so far but this is not the steel it's one of the alloys it seems like a very good alloy with a very nice coating it's definitely not bad it's on the higher end of hardwares but it's not the top of the line in my experience so far I see about 12 square foot of leather in front of me, six for outside, six for inside lining. Beautiful leather selections. My leather estimate is $100. To assemble a bag like this, including hardware and the workmanship, in Italy, I give $155. My total comes down to $255 to make a bag of this sort in Italy. This was one of the most painful dissections I have done in this channel so far. I love the bag since we bought it and it's very unfortunate that it had to end up this way. But we learned a lot of things from this dissection. I love the leathers, I love the design, I love the construction, hardware, everything about this bag. And the deal was unbelievable. Given my estimate of $255 to make a bag like this, seems to have quite a bit of premium when we compare to the original price of $2,400. But the good thing is, if you check around for Ferragamo Studio Box Bag Mini, you will find different deals on different sites. For example, on Saks Fifth Avenue, I see a sale of $1,680 at this point. So it seems like Ferragamo runs different deals in different platforms depending on the time of the year. So if you like the bag, if you love the quality we found here, you might check around to save some money on this design. 
At the end of the day, this is a luxury brand and the materials, the leathers, the artisanship they employed here is exceptional. So it's comforting. Whether you choose to pay the full price for their high expensive items or you get yourself a deal like myself in Europe for $700 for a bag like this, it's going to be a steal. At least you're not getting something mediocre or lower quality. That's reassuring. And this dissection only makes me curious about further reviews from the same brand as I'm very, very impressed. I hope you find this dissection helpful. And if you want to watch more brand reviews, you can check it out here. And as always, until next time, stay leather tamed.